In January of 1997, coach Valery Lebanovsky returned from Kuwait to Dynamo Kiev. At that time, the club was in a deep crisis. However, the Ukrainian football coach succeeded to bring Kiev back to the top of European football that very same year. On October 22, 1997, at UEFA Champions League game in Kiev, the Barcelona football team played against Dynamo Kyiv. Barcelona lost 3-0. Bad luck was how Louis van Gaal, manager of Spanish, described the loss of his team at the press conference. One week later in Barcelona, Dynamo Kyiv won the return match 0-4. And within a month, Kyiv was the winner of the C group which in addition to Barcelona included Eindhoven and Newcastle. The reason for this success was a special way they played, which Lobanovsky described as universal football. In contrast to European football philosophies, where a list of quite complex strategies and tactics are crucial, Lobanovsky organization is really a philosophy. It is derived from a kind of Eastern European tranquility. For Valery Lobanovsky, football is a physical process where two critical masses participate. The task of these masses is to size and control the space. Control means not only occupying the space, but imposing the rhythm of the game on the opponent. Imposing the rhythm of the game on the opponent. What does it mean exactly? To answer this question, rhythm must first be defined. Biological rhythm is caused by periodic states and changes of organism. In poetry, rhythm is considered as the sequences of different accent patterns with the constancy of verse meter. In language, rhythm is defined as a temporal division of speech. And the rhythm in music is the accent patterns designated through the sequence of different note values that overlay the basic pulse. Soren Kierkegaard, next Soren Kierkegaard's book, Works of Love, described the way rhythm can manipulate the meaning of the same sentence. Kierkegaard, philosopher and poet, finds a way to attach different meanings to the same sentence, just by altering the rhythm. For example, in the second paragraph, B, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. C, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In this case, the rhythm is an accentuation with an irregular recurring constant. Defense and attack are Lebanovsky accent patterns during the game. The implementation of such accents means forcing or imposing the rhythm of the game on the opponent. I consider painting a game. I'm interested in football strategies because painting and football have common aspects and share similar processes. As in all other games, in painting, the successful result is crucial. My goal is to triumph in the battle against the surface. I, however, I am satisfied not just by achieving any successful result, but only if I have realized my concept. Such an accomplishment cannot be planned beforehand, but one can try to find procedures to make it possible. Just as in football, I'm looking for the rhythm in painting. So what is the rhythm in painting? In order to answer this question, it is necessary to understand the essence of painting. Painting is applying color to a surface by hand or by using other tools. This applying of color to surface is a movement in space and time. And the accentuation of this movement is the rhythm in painting. Next. To illustrate rhythm in painting, 
Let us imagine a bus. The bus has a specific number of seating and standing capacity allocated by the designers. The accentuation or the rhythm happens within the basic patterns within a set number of places to be used. This creates passengers, whether large or small, heavy or slim, alone or in groups, with prams or in wheelchairs. The units which a painter applies to the surface are the size and character of the passengers of a bus. Life is permanent movement in cycles and rhythms. Such rhythms shape my physical and physiological state and have a direct influence on my painting. The more secure and the more conscious my use of them are, the higher my chances, chances for a victory over the surface. The pleasure of painting quickly vanishes if the concept cannot be realized. The impossibility of realizing it often doesn't depend on varied techniques of painting, but rather on how one is able to implement the different techniques. Working with different techniques allows one to change the terrain and raises the chances to forbidding the surface. Such shifting movements form a technical rhythm which gives me the possibility to use my physical rhythm efficiently. In painting I learned from Garry Kasparov. The game of chess was just as reputable as a football or ice hockey during my childhood in Kyiv in the 1980s. Especially the rivalry between Anatoly Karpov and Garry Kasparov provided for this popularity. While Karpov was regarded as a favorite in the capital of the Soviet Ukraine and as a representative of the Moscow government, Kasparov won the sympathy of Kyiv. Kasparov's art of play enabled the Grand Master to win the world title in 1985, which we, he successfully defended for the following 15 years. The Grand Master makes moves not only because he responds spontaneously to events, but because he wants to checkmate his opponent in 10, 15 moves. I'm applying the colors on the surface not in direct response to an event, but because I want to conquer the painting as a whole. The goal of chess is to checkmate your opponent's king. The goal of painting is to dominate, to beat the surface. Achieving the goal requires strategy and tactics. Each touch of the surface of the painting with color is either consistent with my strategy or contradicts it. The continuous reflection on the procedure of painting helps me to get over the obstacles and indecision and mere self-confidence. I decide at the start of the game whether I go slowly on the surface, step by step or fast, dynamic attacking. There is, however, no dynamic and aggressive manner. There is, however, excuse me. There is, however, no universal strategy that guarantees success. I love to paint in fast, dynamic and aggressive manner, but many times I have lost using this procedure. The situation changes often on the surface while I juggle with the colors and I have to decide during the process whether to retain my original strategy or pick up a new one. In chess and in painting, there are moves that contradicts absolutely the strategy of action but save the game. If the strategy is a game plan, then the tactic is a conscious reaction to the game. Often when I paint, I get to a balanced position. I have achieved a draw, a kind of peaceful solution. But I want to go further, and if I do, I lose this attained position. So I must hold out. A state like this in chess is called mindful idleness. The balance between me and the painting doesn't last and it is then clear for me 
when I should attack. If I cannot get myself under control, there will be no draw anymore and I will lose. This strategic, strategic goal must be converted into organic tactical thinking. Often, however, breaks in intuition mandates a new step in the course of the rules. Every successful painting of mine has points that are beyond interpretation. Such points on the surface are contrary to my intentions and nevertheless they play an essential role. But when I entrust too much to intuition, I make mistakes and the painting, painted surface crumbles. The calculus must not to degenerate to the scheme. So what is a beautiful formula? In his book, Conversation with Cezanne, Joachim Gasquet quotes the French painter. It is necessary to be a good worker, nothing but a painter, to have a formula and to realize it. He looks at me sad and sublime. The ideal of heaven and earth is to have a beautiful formula. During my studies at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich, I was looking for a polarity in painting. I wanted to avoid special representations and instead produce a difference in which the color remains on the surface and yet wins visual vastness. In order to not lose control in my experiments with the properties of color, I was looking for a way of organizing the surface that could provide me with an obvious entry and clear conclusion in painting. Thus, I have developed a basic model which divided the surface into equal intervals of numerical impulses such as 1-4, 1-9, 1 to 16, 1 to 25, or 1 to 36, for example. Such meter encourages not only the con concentration of spontaneous choices between events or entries, but also causes a conscious attitude toward the pace in which colors can be attached on surfaces. According to the division of the surface, I focused my thoughts on the procedure of the movement in painting. In out, an outstanding element of the process of painting is the rhythm in which the fabrication of an artwork is accomplished. Rhythmical structures generate the process of painting as more or less determinated movement in space and time. It gives form to the application of color on surfaces. The rules of such a shaping, is its sequence and number can be set and handled as the rhythmical motifs, such as 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 5, for example. Here the 1 is to be conceived as a basal unity of movement that can be freely chosen. As an example for one rhythmical motif, I take a fig leaf. If you compare the proportion of single part of the leaf, the following rhythm appears. One, one, three, three, five. How does that work, Alexei? Could you just explain that a little bit on the, the proportion of the thing? Yes. Just to... So where is the one, one? One, one, okay. three, three, exactly. five, five. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> it's, like three, it's about the rhythm and the size and you have... Um, for example, you have this both elements, it's, uh, you can, can consider it a one and a one. Yes. It's basically three times the one, three, three, and one, five. So, so the, the, the three is what? How is the three in so relation to this being one? Um, if this is one, this is basically three, three times, times the size exact. of this one. In, in terms of surface area or in terms of this length? Of, uh, uh, of and the whole mass. How, how yeah, the surface space. area then. Maybe you can see it here. It's also because clear. I really want these guys to grasp this. <laughs> so we explain tomorrow during the workshop as well. Yeah. So it's more for people interesting okay. too for painting. So you're, you're implying really that in nature there are ratios and proportions in nature? As well, of course, yes. Yeah. And then this is a, 
Okay, so you're working, you're following this guy, so he's working with units, and he's dividing up the canvas into units, and he's playing with different units and different repetitions of units or different mathematical sequences, really. But within that, it's not just a straight mathematical formula, it's actually the, there are elements of improvisation in this as well. So it, it, the tension between the structure of an order and the improvisation in it. So this is a methodology for this. Exactly. So, um, it's just like, apologies that I say. No, it's okay. Uh, so if, if somebody have... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. We brauchen nächstes Bild. The basic pattern during the splitting or dividing the, of the surface and the reproduce of the movement during the painting are represented with the help of certain signs and symbols. And so the beautiful formula language was created. This language allows us to understand the procedure of compositions, to rely the compositions, and to create new ones. So, as an example of the use of the beautiful formula language and the creation by the beautiful formula language, is the composition Shah, 2012, for example. Next one. And the composition Stalker. <coughs> Can we just go back a bit, my apologies, yes. Alexi, just to make sense. Can we go back two slides? Uh, the formula, so M stands for meter, the meter being... The meter being the this, uh, no. This is a meter, this it's... Uh, the meter. Okay. The meter is about to divide the surface. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, whatever, nine. So that's that's the meter then. So the meter is the, the, the units you use the repetition and how many times it's broken up then. So in this case it's four, this one it's nine, this one it's... Okay, so did you be getting that, guys? Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. And then the next the next slide on, you were looking at... Uh, uh, because you have meter, area, obviously the size of the area, uh, the rhythmic motif. What does that mean, the rhythmic motif? Okay, it's just like what we talked before. You know, if you hear this, you have a one, one, three, three, five. This would be a motive for this fig tree, for okay. example. Okay, right, okay. Okay? This is complex. Yes. Okay, can we go back to the list again? Are you following this, guys? This is, this is uh, taxing on the, on the little brain box uh, element. So you've got rhythmical motif, element. Element. It's just, you know, yeah, please. Veronica? No, please. Veronica? <laughs> no, the element is who is painting. He, he could be an element, he could be an element. Okay. So, so this painting. For, for, for yeah. example, M is the meter. You divide up your surface into 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 different uh, Look, meters. And I will show you. Oh. Look, you see, for example, a blue uh, markers and red markers and 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 uh, dark blue. This is okay. elements, for example. They're the elements. Yeah, okay. you can right. see the elements here. There are six. A, B, C, D, e, F, uh, yeah. Exact. There are six different colors. Okay. You know, in this case, is elements. Brilliant. Okay. So we got the meter, the T again. T, it's a tact. So, it, okay, so it's a very complex language. And for this language, we need more time and we need a workshop and we do it tomorrow. So if somebody had interest in time, you're welcome. And it's really for people who deal with painting. You know, it's uh, like if uh, I'm trying to, to explain a note system or okay. for a musician in, in during uh, one lecture, it's not possible. So, how do you arrive at the mathematical formula? So, for instance, you've got it's starting to get really complex down here. It's not a really a, a, B, C, D, E, B, and then you've got and it's one four A. This is looking like a really complex score now. Uh, how do you arrive at that? Okay, it's uh, the language is not. Uh, so the the idea of language is to write something what happened but for visual artists. It's just like a partiture. It's similar to the mu music, music, you know. If uh, you understand the language of notes, you know, you can play this uh, piece of, of compositions in, in Tokyo, in London, or in Munich. It's similar uh, to painting. So we develop a language, and you can write down the all images you know. These images from Cezanne, or images from or painting from Daniel or Veronica, or it doesn't matter. So it's just like a, a symbol, a symbols and, and um, um, marks 
uh, that best, uh, describe a procedure during the painting and describe what happened on the surface. Okay. okay? I get it. I think we can talk about this after that. Okay, yes, of course. Okay. Um, the idea to apply the beautiful formula concept into a group work was successfully realized in the winter 2012. Together with artists from various sectors of the visual arts, painting, drawing, graffiti, so you can recognize Daniel <laughs> and Veronica as well. <laughs> um, I founded the Beautiful Formula Collective. Since 2012, the Beautiful Formula Collective has realized live painting performances, uh, workshops and seminars at the art colleges, galleries and museums in Munich, Zurich, Singapore, Tbilisi, Tehran, London, to name a few. The spontaneous and reflexive reaction to visual conditions of a composition on the surface is the essential structure of the Beautiful Formula Collective. The Beautiful Formula concept allows not only realizing of artworks in a different areas of the visual art, but is also cross-disciplinary. In the summer of 2008, I heard Steve Coleman live in music with two bands. The alto saxophonist and his five elements from New York met the rapper from the hip-hop collective Apusakobin from Washington. Steve Coleman has succeeded by a complex rhythm to make one band out of two. The musicians were playing their own rhythms in different cycles. The cycles overlapped and parted again. This fluctuation were supported by very intense groove. The change in spectacular speed from soft and slow to loud and fast. The musicians responded reflexively to the changing music musical conditions without losing the balance of the band. I contacted Steve Coleman in order to, un to undertake a performance with common rhythmical motifs in which painters and musicians participate together. The performance was success successfully realized in the Munich Art Academy of Fine Arts in July 2013. Last year I was asked by Stadli architects to try to implement the beautiful formula ideas on the design of a storefront. Here's an example with a rhythmical motif 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5. <coughs> Just load the games and the dancing look only for the rhythm in everything. Magalon, thank you very much. <laughs> We finished a little ahead of schedule there, Alexi. That, <laughs> uh, that was quite an intense uh, set of thoughts to get our heads around. Would it be possible to kind of go back through and look at maybe some of your paintings where you would explain some of the, uh, how, you, how the surface has arrived at that particular structure through the kinds of uh, notations you've uh, kind of listed there? Okay. And also, I'm kind of curious about the, uh, the, the front of this building. Yeah. You, you mentioned the, modul the modulation. If you could unpick that a bit for us. Uh, the, how many people here are mathematicians? <laughs> You're going to have to do this at pretty basic level for me and for the rest of the guys here. Could you explain just the modulation, that, how that worked on that building front then? Okay, so... Um, Ziegel, how do you say Okay, it's just like uh, stones, black stones and white stones. Okay. You know? And uh, in this case, the stones were put not horizontally, but Vertically, okay. And uh, the it's a little bit small there because I think it's hard to see. If I, I think Alessi is okay. talking about this little part. These mean the windows. Yeah, got it. These, these are bricks in different uh, colors where okay. you can find a rhythmical motif. Because the guys from back there, they only see the, the window structure. But in yeah. between the window structures here, you can just yeah. pick them out. It's hard they're to all see in different picture, rhythmical uh, arrangements in different sequences. The, so exactly. And these okay. different sequences. Is, uh, okay. 
respond to the rhythm one, two, one, three, one, no, five. No, I see it now. Okay. It's in the, in the space between the windows there. Exactly. Right? So. Okay. Have you got, I mean, it would be really great just to look at some of your paintings, some of the different paintings you've produced, and to talk about maybe how you've devised the structure in it. I mean, you were going to talk about this one here. Um, okay, well, uh, I was in a swimming pool and I saw uh, a line to, uh, to a, a pomace, how do you say, uh, fries? Fries, yeah. And uh, in the German, you call schar. Schar means if, if uh, a group of people. Uh, <laughs> Of yeah, but it's also uh, if birds are flying together, so it's uh, if we have a group, you know. And uh, I thought it's an interesting process, so I would like to write down it and to paint it. So then I, I write down it and paint. <laughs> and how does it, you know, if you see, for example, here, the characters, they have space between. Yes. Yes. And in this case, they are together. So that means shah, that means uh, group, so... Yeah, stuck together. It, but maybe you can talk about stalker, the idea of stalker? Yeah, um, yeah before I... I yes. Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, this, this idea with a beautiful formula language is... Um, for example, it, it isn't that uh, strict and mathematic as it, as it might look uh, uh, on the first sight. So. Um, the idea was basically in, uh, in music you have uh, you have you can write down with notes you have a idea of a, a sound or a composition and you 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 can write it down and maybe beautiful formula is an approach to um, just uh, to provide a structure uh, where you just have a, an, an image of a composition in your head and the formula language provides a structure um, to bring it on paper or to describe it um, without even painting it. And for example, I could write down some kind of composition, pass it over to another artist, and he's working with this kind of composition and makes his own piece of art out of this. And um, it's. Um, it's about uh, working together, I think, with this uh, kind of language, because um, different elements can stand for different artists, and um, those uh, terms are just to know what you're talking about. So you divide the surface, and you have talking about special areas you have, and that's a way of uh, explaining uh, between the artists who, who um, what you're working on so um, on one simple level when you see these guys working and there's going to be the workshop tomorrow afternoon literally uh, in the past I've seen each with a single implement so they have a single implement maybe a single color note and then there is a score and then one might make one mark, one might make two marks, one might make a mark which goes in a certain direction. So within the idea of it being a certain mark, it could be placed anywhere. And sometimes it's to do with maybe there's a formula where they have to connect to the previous mark in some way. So each time each artist takes it in turn to make a mark on the canvas, they are having to respond to the previous mark. So, so there is a formula there, but it's actually still utterly about a connectivity and responsiveness to the previous mark. So it's about a complete concentration of the performance responding to the last mark of the last person and gradually the structure of the work works uh, it develops so you will see that tomorrow but uh, I was wondering if there if, if you had a few more images just to uh, to show them just to encourage them to see other do we have uh, internet there. access here um, we have I have uh, because it would be the website wouldn't it be the ideal um, I'll take a look at it because we have what time is it now we have we are 16.11, we usually have, we normally go for about another 20 minutes. Yeah, so of course, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I don't know if there is. It should be, actually. Uh, come on, maybe computer. Because uh, I can program, file, let's have a look, we should. Um, Internet Explorer. Yeah, if we have, um, yeah, we'll be on that. Okay. Any <laughs> questions? I've got, Ian, I've got a question. Please. Could you tell us a little bit about how the collective was formed? Okay. Why, why it was formed? Sure. Uh, 
Look, uh, I uh, was always interesting about the rhythm in painting. And uh, I thought that, that ideas uh, has also other artists, they work with visual uh, art, you know. And then I talk to uh, some artists, you see the image of them, and I ask, so what do you think maybe we can try to develop these ideas together and work together? And I say, OK, we can try. And who, where, where were these artists found? What, were they peers, or were they people? Or oh, it's uh, very different. You know, it was uh, uh, with one of him. I was a, st a student in the art academy in Munich. He w uh, was also a student, but a little bit early. The another one was complete artist. I met him two years before we, I ground this. And uh, the Danny is was also very dangerous guy in Munich because he was very graffiti. You know, the helicopters was following him, and uh, I heard about him uh, by Veronica. You know, and and uh, so it's really completely different uh, people and very completely different ways to to meet them. And then we met us in my studio and we worked together. And um, so it's an open group as well. So it's not just only these people. And I learned a lot from Daniel. Because Veronica makes a drawing and and film. So and I, I learned a lot of from Veronica as well. So you can see uh, videos uh, of our performance as well on YouTube. And uh, um, and you can see also, yeah, different collectives and, and different people. We we also make make uh, workshops with the students, where was uh, more than twenty people work together on, on one painting, you know, as well. So the, for artists or for painters also interesting because we learn from each other during the process. So I develop my art as well because. Uh, the way he brings the color on the surface, or she is different from me, you know, but I can learn from it. So, yeah, for, for me, the interesting uh, thing working with this collective and this uh, language, for example, was um, it is every one of us, every one of the collective <coughs> has really his uh, own work and is working very different from, from each other, but. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the process of working together um, with a with a structure um, brings you really to new ideas in your own work. Uh, that was the interesting thing for for me, because um, when you're forced to uh, work with each other or in one painting to respond on each other, you will find solutions in painting or colors. Uh, which you'll never find on your own, or uh, you come back to your own work and uh, take something with you. Maybe you have done and say, oh, I would have never used uh, <coughs> those colors or those tools together or this kind of composition. Um, but, uh, and that's uh, what art is about, I think, to, to break up your own concept and bring in something new. Um, and to get you out of your comfort of comfortable area and so on and to to always do something new with it and this is was the interesting thing about working together when you have to respond on some other decisions made by other artists so um, you can learn for me I learned quite a lot from it and which I took to my own work and which uh, developed my own work as well which is in some ways completely different, but um, that's, that's a good way of working together. Do you ever, do you ever see a conflict of interest between the individual and the collective? This is a good question. This one take exactly. Or how does it so the, the point of the beautiful formal ideas is not, uh, it's a balance between a, a structure and spontaneously. So, and there's also a um, balance between uh, um, Gesetze. Uh, so yes, kind of laws, and laws and <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, Freiheit, also freedom and freedom. You know, it's just like similar. You know, sometimes I have a schedule for for what for two or three days, and I like it. And sometimes I hate it if I I just want to wake up in the morning and do completely my improvisation of the day. So they're similar uh, with my paintings and similar with this group. So we try, uh, we, we have a, a lot of different compositions. 
there are some compositions more strictly, there are some more open. In, in some way we have, uh, for example, very, very straight structure at the beginning and then it would be very open. So it's, a, it, it's a like in the life, we're learning from it. So the, my, my example with a uh, uh, fig leaf is because I try to learn from the nature and the process in the nature and the process in my life, you know. So and their language is maybe similar to to model of the time that uh, we have uh, this lecture here and I have accepted time and you as well. But what would happen during the lecture, we don't know. So it's similar to this composition. So I have some structures that help me uh, and the others to understand what they have to do in the moment, but what would happen, we don't know. So, is it answer your question? I think so, yeah. I mean, it was interesting you referenced Kasparov and Dino Kiev, the teamwork and the individual, the individual versus the collective and the team, you know, so working together. And then I'm just, I'm just curious about how it works. Come tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sort of Thank complimentary you. and... You know the blank painting with the pink blue on it, because that's quite a good example of... But we, do you have a, a YouTube access here? Okay. Where is it in the... You have seen it before, or...? Yeah, the, the, the with the numbers. You no, know, it was with the pink, blue, yellow... Okay. Can I ask you a question? By calling it the beautiful blue uh, blank painting, um, formulae kind of suggest you attach a value system to it, but then what you said it doesn't sound like a value system. So how do you... I can understand how you get something out of it yourselves, but how do you then evaluate it? I mean, how do you decide that it works? Or what's the point at which it works? <laughs> yeah, if it works or not, you, you, you see it in the end. If so, it's you, it works. Oh. so you evaluate it on what you see? Yeah, of course, because um, you see what the other is doing, which has a certain value, and maybe you're so not happy. Well, maybe you're not happy with it, and with your entries, you try to push it in well, the other direction. There's a conflict between the methodology and the title. Exactly, but the, 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 the point is that the beautiful formula. It's a like a paradox, beautiful and formula, you know, and and. This is a point, and I think it's also the same, similar in the life, you know. And uh, that what that point uh, is very interesting. That's why I'm, I'm learned from from football, uh, also for my art, or from chess game, or from musician, or from the cook, how they are doing, you know. Uh, and uh, I like that this paradox, and I think the the truth is something somewhere between. So. When things fail, when things go wrong, or when you break the rules, the system. <laughs> then, then <laughs> that happened as well. So you know, it suggests you have a green lamp and you have a red lamp. <laughs> And sometimes I go uh, uh, on the other side with the green, and sometimes I go the red. I, I, I break the laws, but uh, sometimes I need it. Yeah. And the similar, uh, we will have it tomorrow as well. If Danny need to do something, what not uh, not uh, in this uh, laws, yeah, then he will do it. So and uh, similar to me, it's not to it's not about the structure. It's, it, as I already said, it's a balance between two things. Maybe, maybe it's about a structure, but it's not about, it's not about rules. You uh, in, it provides a structure of working together, but um, you, you still have, it, it's still painting. You still have to uh, react on the surface and the color that is on the surface and um, you respond to it uh, within a certain structure, but your, your entries are the color, it, it's not determined where it has to be. You react to each other in a certain way, but um, you still have a freedom of choice where, where to push it. It's a good analogy maybe to Cezanne, I think. Uh, it's interesting that you were quoting Cezanne. Exactly. Um, and one of the key attributes of Cezanne, if you think back to, I suppose, uh, Monet or some of the Impressionists, in a way they're just kind of responding to sensations. There's a kind of a pinkish quality here, bluish quality there. 
and in many ways, what they were doing is they were just responding to sensations to the eye. What, what was really interesting about Cezanne is that he tried to formulate those sensations, so in terms of color harmonics, and uh, there's a really delightful little story about uh, Renoir's in the same field with uh, Cezanne. Cezanne has been in the field with Renoir for about two hours. Uh, Renoir's finished his painting. It's a nice little kind of harmonic, pleasant little kind of landscape. And Cezanne's got six marks on his canvas. A little boy comes by, comes by and says, your mate's better than you, he's finished. To which Cezanne heaves the canvas up in the air because he's broken his concentration. And what Cezanne was trying to do is to, not simply to copy, or just get the atmosphere about there, but to understand the kind of, if you like, the visual logic of how light is falling across forms, uh, how each touch corresponds to another touch. So it's a very complex and elaborate kind of response to the sensational looking of the world. It's just not just, not just a, a kind of laissez-faire emotional impression. It's really about if this color is noticed here, this color corresponds to something over here. So when he has that particular color in his mind, he's looking for that color throughout the whole of the space how that touch makes one note go forward, one go back. So in a sense, there's a kind of a formula in Cezanne. There is a kind of a logic to it. It's still improvising and responding in an improvised way, but there's, a, there's an acute sense of trying to devise a kind of structure to hold the experience together. So it goes beyond simply a kind of an emotional or a kind of color harmonic thing. That's why Cezanne is such a great painter, and that's why he was really the, the kind of foundation, it was kind of the foundation really for the transformation of painting into the 20th century. Uh, Please. How do you decide when a work is finished? Because when you're working as a collective, I mean, it's hard enough individually. To Look, I, I, I would... Do you have like a, a set time to finish the work? You know, no, you give no, no. Yourself, you know, it, it's a different ways. It's just like in the life is similar as well. So it, actually, uh, I think we can make uh, some difference between image and painting. I can talk uh, in English about image is finished, but not about painting. It's just like a balance from the beginning till the end. Uh, it was a very great exhibition of Cezanne in Zurich, I think it was 2002, uh, unvollendet, how do you say? Unfinished? Unfinished, Cezanne unfinished, you know. So finished and unfinished called exhibition, exactly. So this is this is a very interesting point between uh, finished and un unfinished. And it, sometimes it's a feeling. Sometimes because we have no time. Sometimes because uh, we have no paint. So it's very different uh, ways. But the goal of all of this is the artwork, our painting. It, we have all, we, in the moment, had the feeling so nobody wants to do something because we like it. We 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 have a feeling we 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 be the surface in the moment. So, but maybe also to answer your question, when we are working with our different compositions, um, there are some compositions where it is very clear when uh, the work is finished whether you're sat satisfied with it or not, because the you um, as one element have only a certain amount of entries you have to uh, um, do on the canvas and that's in some ways it's very interesting because you know it's, uh, it has to be finished now whether you're satisfied or not and in other cases we have compositions where it is an open end where uh, all artists working together without uh, talking a lot, look to each other, <coughs> uh, um, say, yeah, this is it, we, we stop here right now. So it's this way and that way. So sometimes it is clear where it stops. And sometimes this is also interesting because um, sometimes it's good if you're forced to stop before it, it is too flat or whatever you would call it. I think everybody, art, every every artist knows it when he wants to do more and more and more and at some point he has overdone it. Yeah. So yes. we yeah. have both ways. So. Mm -hmm. One of you might want to do more and the other one yeah. might want to say no. Yeah. But I think that's the most interesting for me because you have this time and you have the possibility you know it from the beginning, you can three times, you can 
paint or do something on this work mm. and then you can't do anything anymore. So you have the other who can we have other possibilities. So you are forced to, to work together. And sometimes you don't agree with them, but <laughs> sometimes you're happy that they, cha they change the, the idea of the work. And so you have this composition and the rules and the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, now it's finished. You can't do anything anymore. And you have to accept this. And so this is what I, I like to work together. And it's not so, yeah, they could happen also things about you don't know before, but Mostly, yeah, it's like partiture or composition where you have on the to check out what you have to mm. do in this time. Because you know that in cells when you're working, drawing or painting, sometimes it may be four or five actions. You almost have a complete composition, then you stop, it's kind of complete, and you put something in, so in something else into it, then it disturbs the composition, then it goes on to another it has yeah. to go back into the process of reforming that it comes to a kind of a conclusion and then and so on so that uh, yeah. and what is really fascinating I think when when watching the group working together is you know that each of these artists has a very very distinct and very particular sensibility you know they are they do not paint the same they work in very different methodologies uh, with very different kinds of languages very different feeling for language different color sensibility they have different memory systems culture as well huh? material and so it's really interesting to watch the, the exchange going on in this way. Uh, it's interesting, maybe a few years ago, uh, Alison and I would be party to this, that uh, the rumor was a few years ago people, uh, that idiot Baldemir Yushket insisted that painting was dead. It's interesting that now he hosts a program on television all about painting. But for a number of years it was kind of, it was clearly felt that somehow painting was of no more relevance, that it was finished as a, a language. Uh, so for me, it's really interesting that maybe certain forms of painting maybe have become uh, redundant, that each generation reforms and finds another way to kind of reconstitute what painting might be. So I mean, this to me is a very kind of dynamic and kind of exciting way for painting to go forward. So I'm talking too much. No. <laughs> yeah, as I already said, the interesting thing as an artist or as a painter or uh, is maybe that uh, to break up your with uh, your own concept and when you're forced to do it it takes you a step further because painting can become very solipsistic it can become totally about you and your sensibility and that's kind of what it's, what it makes it so sort of beautiful on one level is the kind of personal <coughs> thing of it but also the dynamic of working in exchange with somebody else as you're saying daniel it stretches that sensibility and stops you from <coughs> falling into your own cliches or into yeah. your own habits, which become a kind of a dead end in a way. Oh. So, please. I just want to ask, with the, with the last one, um, yes. do you talk to each other, or is there, any, is there any noise? So do you talk to each other while you're painting, or is there any music, or is it complete silence? No, it was, uh, it was completely silent, yes. There was no music in this case. In this example before, with the uh, white and the black, um, it, it, no, normally it's it's quite silence, but uh, you, you you talk to each other what you do on the surface, I think, and um, sometimes we look at each other and c communicate in some ways, but um, it, it's not like that we oh you should do something over there. I think this would be fine. Um, you communicate with each other in, in a very different way, in a visual way. You exactly. see what the other is doing and um, you can respond on it or do it the other way around. <laughs> but it's, it's not a, really ba a, a lot of bad talking. But after you finish, do you talk about it then? Yeah, of course. Right. Of course, okay. uh, so that was coming back to what I was asking you before. So how do you how do you evaluate that then? Because I mean, you talked about how you evaluate your own experience and the knock-on effect onto your work, which I can understand, and that whole thing shifting in practice. But I'm just interested to know how you, you know, how, <coughs> how you think in your own minds about afterwards. How you how you think whether it works. With our eyes, uh, uh, eyes, you know that then the, the <laughs> no, yeah, but you've no. all got different eyes. 
Yeah, of course, but you know, it's interesting that uh, in some point with the people who work on the visual art in the same level, I, I, can't, I work with these people in China or Turkey, somebody doesn't speak English at all, you know, but we understand each other. And in this case, it's similar, because uh, the communication, what you're talking about, it, it, uh, communication on the surface. It's just like sometimes we, we go through the London yesterday and we, 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 we get the same, some, the same point on the street was fascinating for us, you know, me, Veronica, and Dani as well. And in, in this case, you understand that that that's our. So I'm asking is how do you invest something with a value? Yeah, it's just a much bigger framing. I mean, what you're doing there suggests a bigger framework of questions than <coughs> what you're actually saying. I think. So the implications of it are bigger than what you're saying there. You know, I mean, you, you can evaluate a painting visually, but beyond it being from a painting, you evaluate things, we all do, according to what we think things are worth. I don't mean in money, but, you know, what, what its merits are. What's that? It's um, significance. It's significance. It's you know, I mean, we all look at our own work and think, yeah, that's great, I might sell it, or, you know, so-and-so likes it, but, but then we might reject it because it, it doesn't pursue enough, the ideas are too narrow, and so I'm just interested how in the, these discussions, when you're talking about it, you might well say, yeah, that one works in terms of painting, but how do you then decide? Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, I think. Yeah, but you know, I should tell you that uh, we meet one time a week, usually right. in the studio, and work together. So what you see there, it's not just only we 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 met them, uh, us, and it's happening, <coughs> but it's a, a a a hard work behind of this, mm. and this is a work we we uh, try to develop our visual uh, erfahrung. Experience. experience, exactly, and with this uh, visual experience, we can uh, recognize. We, can, we we have a feeling. I I don't you know if I work with students as well, I cannot ex I I, sh uh, I I I I don't have to explain them. Oh, this is a great work. What you did, you can feel it. You know, it's uh, it's like uh, uh, during the football game. You see the goal, or you see the the. This team is won. You know, this in this in this case is similar. We go with you uh, right now through the through the studios uh, and and and, and so the works and you you can see there are some students are happy that another not so happy with the works. But I think that this uh, this is the truth. Or yeah. but, um, <laughs> maybe to to your question, um, we we are also talking when we work together about we come up. Uh, with those compositions and maybe I said uh, Alexi I I have an idea about the composition I try to write it down and uh, we see if we can do it and on, on this approach is first of all is uh, if it works for us I'll work in a uh, just in a visual way that's the one thing um, but there is also uh, the, the composition Behind that follows an idea and uh, follows um, um, or uh, something you have in your mind you want to um, bring down in a composition so that maybe that has to do something with the significance. It's not only uh, if it works visual but uh, if the idea behind that works as well. Um, but isn't part of the significance the fact that you're doing it together? I mean, isn't part yeah. of it the fact that if someone else came along and saw the work, that and they knew a little bit about why you did it, that the significance would come from the fact that you did it together? And in fact, some of the meaning then derives from that, comes from, the meaning comes from that. So it's a little bit like when you're watching an orchestra, and one of yeah. the moving things about watching a live performance is the knowledge that everyone has to get it right then. Yeah. And so that's moving because that's about people, that's the ultimate kind of cooperation. Yeah. 
So, I mean, it just seems to me that that that's how I would, you know, I was thinking, well, how does this mean something? And, I mean, yeah, they might look pretty, they might look nice. Yeah, but that's not the point. Either. I know that. Sure. But I'm just trying to get it out in words how you put the beauty is perhaps in the collaboration, perhaps. No, no, in this case, of course, but you know, you have a, a conscious, um, conscious way. And I think the, 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 our uh, idea is to, I think it's, it's really uh, visual. So it, the best thing, if you have time tomorrow, just come and see that. But and you will understand it's not about performance, it's not about, uh, it's not about the way that we work together. It's uh, really for painter or for visual artist. We want to make an artwork, we want to, to, to make a painting together. But it's, uh, and, and, and we learn from each other and we want to, to have a feeling. Yeah, but you're doing it in public and you've come to give a lecture. So it involves the audience to some extent. Yeah, but in this case, you know, uh, sometimes uh, I, have, uh, I have also collectors and they invite me to paint on the wall and they invite a lot of people yeah, and they paint. the audience has, has, you know, the way that the, the work relates to an audience is surely significant. No, the, my idea was to start with the performance because I think the painting uh, is completely different to image and it must be seen how how great is it to paint, you know? That's like a football. Uh, you, you can, you can, no, of course you can learn today Arsenal won against the Bayern or lose against the Bayern, but you can see the way how they do, do it. And that is why people go to stadium. The, the meaning of the football is the same uh, about 100 years. But the way the, uh, the, uh, the, the um, players uh, do it, it was fascinating. That's why it's come to uh, TV. So and I think it's also fascinating sometimes how he put uh, his uh, markers or his uh, painting on the surface, or she or the others, you know? So, so is it about the experience of being in the, in the present, in the real time, when this is actually happening as, a, yeah. as an event? Yeah, of the course. Activity? Yeah, so rather like a crowd watches a football match, yeah. experience that through 90 minutes, that's a durational time. Yeah, so it's not about the, the end result necessarily, it's about of course it's being about participating the... or being... No, no, it's about result. You know, this is the same yeah. in the football. The most important thing each manager will tell you is the result. You know, but the people who come to stadium will say, oh, the game was so bad. But our team wants, you know. The, the Lebanowski uh, said once, uh, "You you don't re uh, remember the game how it was, but you remember result." So our result is a painting. What, what happens we if you play a really beautiful game, and your your team is producing really brilliant football? You know, it's like the skills are amazing, and you lose yeah. the match to yes. the team. That yes. Has sometimes. A different yeah. Sometimes we have this. So. Th while the process of painting, we said, wow, how you respond, uh, responded on that, this entry of me. And within the process, this is very good. But uh, sometimes in the end, we lose because uh, we messed it up at the end. This can also happen. Exactly. Yeah. Can I just ask, um, all of these video clips, were you all given a certain formula to, to begin with? Or did one person come up with the formula, and you followed the formula, the beautiful, uh, the beautiful formula? Where does that come into, actually, from start to finish? Does at the beginning somebody decides an idea and uses the formula, or do you mm. look at uh, after you've finished? The formula How's it involved in, in the actual making? The formula, formula in general, or in a. Uh, Specific painting. The beautiful formula yeah. is is that that's what you use to create uh, the group work, or is that something that you figure out later on, or do you use the formula to start? Basic, base, basically, 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 we use this kind of language to start to, so to, to, to structure to, to structure mm -hmm. process of working together. And do you do that in a group or? 
it's all different. Sometimes one person yeah. comes up with a formula. Yeah. Exactly. Basically, it's, it's, exactly. Basically yeah. it's like this. Um, sometimes you have an uh, abstract idea uh, of a composition and we talk to each other and we say, oh, I thought about this. How, how could we arrange this? How could we uh, write this down? Or So um, with the formula, would you have a part of that formula that you only did? And then you have your part of the formula and yes. so on and yeah, so forth? Okay. Look, I, I show you a little bit. Uh, you can... It's that's beginning to which element you are and which uh, part of the pro so procedure of the you want to do because you can do, yeah, you can also choose every time you can choose what you want to do from this uh, composition. But and you so can change it and be spontaneous if you feel the yeah. need. Yes. So that's where the contradiction is. Mm -hmm. But it's a great contradiction because yeah. you're allowing spontaneity. Yeah. Yeah as well as the structure. Exactly, yeah. It's not that strict that you're, that uh, when you write something down that it says you have to put your mark <laughs> here, because no. it wasn't, wouldn't work like that, because you have to uh, have the freedom to, to decide, to respond, and uh, otherwise if you're totally determined what to do, it would work, I think. So say, you, for instance, you were doing one to nine, and you were doing one to, to 25 or I think 24. Yep. Oh, mm. that's, that, 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 that's not about that. It, it's just when about this one to nine or one to 25. It's, uh, it's just a, a tool uh, that we know what we are talking about. Um, so, this um, is the basic of the language. Yeah. So, so do you have written down this composition and the procedure and you know you are element A and you have to do you have to hit the meter at the beginning, so and the meter is one to nine, so you know you have to hit the meter. You have to find one of these nine po points of the surface, and these are the basic rules and which you know. But it's not so if you don't uh, hit. It's yeah. really <laughs> and that starts the rhythm. Point. Yeah, and then you have this rhythmic uh, rhythmical motive. So you have, for example, one, one, three, five. So. You can choose the size also. It's, it depends on the size. One is could be like this, like small, and five is so. Or you can one size can uh, yeah you can. Uh, and so it's an energy as well. It's invisible between the group too. I could imagine like a flow of energy between you yeah. all. Yeah. You can't good see. Or yes, yeah, good description. Yeah. Exactly. What I like because um, it's not so you it's paint together and <laughs> you make some mess on <laughs> the surface. You have these rules and uh, mm. this is what I prefer because you have this freedom because no one says you you can you have to do a point or something. So you have to think about oh shit what can I do now? Uh, what have I yeah what can I paint? So it's also. It's not easy in every way <laughs> to, to so, uh, sometimes because you have only this possibility and what uh, yeah I can point a line uh, or yeah or, or um, everything it could be also as I said an object or something it's, I can do what I want <laughs> but where and when and how big and I can. I have a lot of possibilities, but I have the rules also, and I have to, to work with them. And so I think it's also the need of uh, this, this is collective. Of English that this you is are English. some people. For me, it's boring if I tried it once to make this composition only by my own. But it's, for me, it's, oh my God. it's boring. <laughs> no, I like it. I prefer it with the other. I don't want to do it. This <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow we'll understand a little bit more. Yeah, yeah I think because it's, it's not so complicated, but you have to know, um, yeah, to to make it by yourself, or also you can see it how it works. So it depends also from the material because we are talking about a lot about color or which material, and this is what um, I learned a lot about different materials because I prefer the pencil because I like drawing. And now, yeah, I, I use everything <laughs> um, which I wouldn't use for my own work. Oh, so, so, yeah. um, this good. is also a great pleasure for me <laughs> because. So, do you think art—that's where art's going now—is um, being more 
to groups and getting students getting together a little bit more so much <laughs> as working on your own. Do you think that's where the future is? It, in my opinion, um, sometimes you have to work together or in a group because um, maybe I uh, repeat it, but uh, when you're only alone in your studio, you're on some point you're satisfied with your concept and you do it over and over and over and that's stagnation and that's not about art, I think. You know, that Daniel and Veronica are professional artists uh, as well, me, and then we have, uh, all of us have our own thing, our own art. Yeah, the way, the way and I it, paint or Veronica or Alexi are very different from each other and it looks different as well when we work yeah. together. And so you're continuously on um, your own projects, but mm. are you actually being um, given some kind of grant to go around as a group? to educate this beautiful formula? Is that sort of the dynamics of your group at the moment is to be... Um Not because we get an invitation if Michael will... <laughs> 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 no, but that's also we have uh, some, some galleries called me and say, okay, let's see, I, I found your project very well, can we, can we do something together? We have an October close to Munich in one beautiful space, the next performance, or for example, we are talking to Steve Coleman right now, and we try to make a tour in the different museums and galleries for this and the next uh, year. So it's and very... Stuff, and why do they ask you? That would answer my question. What is your question? Why do they ask you? Him? Steve Coleman? Yeah, why do people want you to go and do it? Why? Go and do your thing. Yeah, what do you think about this interest of the people? Yeah, I understand. Um, well, uh, I think it's a different uh, 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 different ways. I, I, maybe we, we, we do right job, you think? <laughs> so no. That's why. I, I mean, uh, uh, we have a collector that buy the works of our group. We have... Uh, yeah, but there must be a reason museums <coughs> the, the, and things are may, maybe, maybe the interesting uh, thing is because it's a very different kind of approach. Okay, no, 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 normally, not yet, normally um, it is, um, if you're working as an artist, it's only about you, the perfect artist, and your work. And I mean, museums are all about culture, aren't they? Yeah. So, and about how that is put to the public. So maybe culturally it's because, <coughs> unlike, Damien Hirst or yeah. it's, it's only it's, it's only yes. him the genius exactly. you know and that, so, yeah. this is so this is a, a, a different yeah. approach to break exactly. this up it's yeah. not um, that you have to respond react not only on nature also on other yeah. artists so and to, to bring it something to other sorts of new in value like yeah, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think also because there are these compositions and there is uh, this basic of language because we have, this is also interesting for, you have, you have uh, another um, way of thinking about the... Yes, the work in the um, collection, so it unpicks, yeah. it's like the, the layer underneath yeah. that unpicks, takes apart the, the surface of the paintings in the shows. It's yeah. a kind of um, a, a di diagram of a painting, I know it isn't a diagram, but it suggests that an underneath structure to a Cezanne or a Poussin or another painting. So it's two different things. In the I think they're more than two different things. I, I, yeah, I, I, had, I had a workshop also, a lecture in Kiev, for example, and one art uh, critical wrote a, a text about a newspaper, and it was completely political, you know? The, the, wrote, the whole text was not about painting, but about how the people can work together uh, not to lose individuality, but work together, you know? And I said, okay, this is his way to see this project. Uh, and um, so maybe it's the answer to your question. So. Yeah, but I think because every artist has his own yeah, language, if, you, um, if I work, I, I, I develop my own way to paint or to draw. And um, if you make it together, the question is also who was painting this uh, yeah, I mean, painting, yeah. and so it's uh, not the individual, 
uh, pay, yeah. uh, the genius or something else. Mm -hmm. These are um, a lot of people or some people who have this basic and they try to um, yeah, to find the best result. So sometimes people are also impressed of the social aspect of working together, how you, you can work because it's normally the most of them, of the people um, think that it's not possible to paint together without struggling or, with, or without a battle or something. Or yeah, for, <laughs> for example, a, a, a work that has been done together uh, cannot have uh, worth at all. So yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. And there and are a lot of be. questions, I think, so, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like one thing, it seems like many, many different facets to this, this group that you've started. And I'm, you know, like really interested and I look forward to having a look tomorrow because I, I do think that's, in an, I'm from Australia and, and I think that we've been taught in the universities over there that that's where art is moving towards more, doing collaborations and more um, installation work and sort of stepping away from the individual as an artist but still mm. having your own practice yeah. but and and sharing ideas and not being so closed yes. and boxed up into a little box mm. where you're not sharing anything whereas I think years gone past it was a bit different um, people kind of just kept to themselves and didn't some people didn't even want to share their um, you know something that they've learnt or, you know, and I think now it's becoming away from all of that, you know, closed, mm -hmm. narrow-mindedness and to open up and to feel energy and to bounce off each other and fight <laughs> and laugh and, you know, all of those mm -hmm. emotions as well. So, yeah, I think it's really fascinating what you guys are doing. Thank you. I need to wind up there. Is there any other last questions? Anybody else got any more questions? We're good. I think it's just nice to say thank you to Monica Daniel.